Hello everyone, this is Dr. Henchman and welcome to Survival Commander. So, I'm starting a brand new series, a brand new survival series, but it has a twist. It's survival, but with command blocks. So, uh, I'll be letting you know over this, the course of the, oh, the course of this episode, um, a little bit about the series. What are my plans? This, there have been a lot of plans. I have been planning this, this series for quite some time, for a number of months. Um, but hopefully it's going to be exciting. I, I know this seed, um, I, I picked it out. Um, we're going to be setting up our base of operations over here. Um, but yes, there's command blocks. Um, I'll, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, here we are, this is where we're, we're going to set up. What I'll do is I'll get uh, I'll get some basic gear going. You know, I'll go down and get some diamonds and, and enchants and and build a nether portal and uh, get a little bit of gear going. And then I'll, I'll bring you back and we'll talk through uh, what this series is about. What are the rules and restrictions and uh, what ideas I have. Um, a little bit of a teaser of what kinds of things I'll be doing in this series. Um, and yes, so I'll see you then. And we're back. I've uh, grown a couple of uh, tall spruce trees. I've got some basic gear going uh, uh, with a diamond pick. I have another portal. I had to go through there to get some some of the uh, stuff that I need um, to get some command blocks going. Uh, you can see that what I've gotten going from the mines I only spent maybe about an hour. Uh, probably a little bit less. I, I did it on the train trip um, to work. Uh, just we needed a little bit of redstone, some quartz, um, a little bit of stone and whatnot. Uh, there is one more thing that we need as well. So which way are we facing? All right, we have to head south for this. Oh, and I set up a little. It's harder to set up some farms over here. Just some little starter farms, just so I gonna get a little bit of gear going. We want to get these command blocks going but um, uh, to, to help us out in this survival world but I thought you know you have to start somewhere but these command blocks are not free. So um, I'm not sure how far it is. It shouldn't be too far. I'll talk about a few things on the way. Uh, there's a mesa biome just over here uh, just this way. Oh. Um, there's a mesa biome that I need to get some clay, some terracotta rather, um, from, which is just over this way. Uh, so, yes, survival on command blocks. So, uh, this uh, series, uh, the idea for it, um, is not my own. Uh, my good friend Zedef, uh, he has done uh, this as a series before, and it is one of my favorite uh, series of his. I really enjoyed it. He uh, he did such uh, creative ideas of like how to use, uh, how to uh, mix in command blocks in, in a way that's fun, not too cheaty. Obviously with commands you can do quite a lot of stuff. Um, you, you know, I could just cheat in you know, a bunch of diamonds. That's not particularly fun in a survival world. But, you know, sometimes you know, we've got some redstone and stuff like that for automation and whatnot, but um, there is a lot of stuff that you can do with command blocks, and in particular, um, oh, it's over this way. Um, in particular, uh, with in, in the new 1.13 release, the update aquatic, there, there was a lot of uh, changes that were made uh, to the commands, and a lot of new functionality was added in. Um, so it, now it's a perfect opportunity, really, to do a series like this. Um, so. I, I'll explain some of the rules later after I craft my first command block. Um, but uh, what else? What, what else can I talk to you about? It, uh, yeah, we. Um, I'll be using uh, not just command blocks. Uh, most of it will be command blocks, but we also have data packs available in 1.13, uh, and so and there's some functionality which you cannot get. Um, which you can't just get uh, using normal command blocks. You, you can use, you can only get using data packs. So I might, um, as part of the series, I, I'm considering finding a way to you know bring in 
uh, data packs to some extent, um, or at least some of the functionality. Um, but try not to um, try not to do it all in there. So I also don't know how we'll go with showing off um, the data packs. Uh, you know, the kind of code in it. We might have to. Um, we might have to record in a text editor to kind of show off what the, the data packs look like. Um, so we need, we'll just get, I think what we'll do is we'll get a stack to, of, uh, of orange terracotta to begin with. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll pick that up, we'll head back to base, and we'll, we're going to get crafting. All right, we're back. We're back here. We've got everything that we need to make some command blocks. So. I think that uh, without further ado, we should get going. So uh, we'll need a couple of th uh, things here to make a command block. In in ZF's original series, uh, he had a custom custom crafting table. Um, luckily, uh, in 1.13, we can actually do it with uh, with custom recipes. Um, so I have made list enabled. You'll see that there is a survival command, a core data pack. This is the core. This is what allows us to get uh, command blocks in survival and let, lets us use it, them in survival. Uh, so this is how you create them. So we we'll just create one to start off with. You put some uh, nether quartz, uh, a redstone block in the middle. We have a comparator on uh, one side and a redstone and a repeater on the other and there you go we've got ourselves a command block so command block we've now got it in our recipe book um, whoop. so we should be able to easily craft them now yeah, so I, I could go ahead and craft as many as I can there we go so we now have eight command blocks and we'll just put the rest away for the time being and so you can see uh, actually, one more thing that we'll do is we'll just quickly craft a lever. There we go. All right, command block time. So, yes, I've got a, a command block. You'll see, normally, um, I'm in survival mode. When I'm holding a command block, uh, I am put into creative mode. This is because um, when you are... Uh, you can't actually interact with a command block in survival. Um, Minecraft only lets people in creative do it. So we can now place down the command block. Once I've placed it down, uh, I go back into survival mode. I can also stand on top of it and go into creative. So this allows me to uh, edit it and interact with it. So another thing that you can do, as you saw, when you go into creative when you're holding a command block. So as a convenience, you can always hold a command block and... Uh, and and right on and uh, click on the command block to interact with it. So let's just say um, hello survival commander. So uh, we've created a command. Uh, we've set our command in our command block, and now we should be able to power it. So there you go. Oh, so powerful. Oh. But this is just the start. We can do so many things with command blocks. We've got what, eight of them now. We can craft more in, in the future. Now, um, if I just clicked on this, if I uh, broke this in, in creative, like, so if I'm in survival and I'm clicking on it, I can't, you can't, it doesn't matter what tool you use, you cannot break a command block. If I stand on top of it, and if I was to left click, um, it would destroy the command block. Um, and I wouldn't get one back. So what I need to do is delete, I think it is. There we go. And I get the command block back. So we have to be really careful when we're in creative. I could just, I could, you know, I could, you can see that I can bring up the creative menu. I'm not going to be using that. Um, I can, I could also just destroy whatever blocks I wanted. So we have to be careful of that as well. So you know, have to, you know, obviously if um, I didn't trust myself, I could do all sorts of things, but we tr I trust myself <laughs> and, um, and we're just going to uh, try and play by the rules. So I have written up some rules of what we, 
um, generally how we're going to be approaching this series, how we're going to be approaching Survival Commander. So, above all else, it should be fun. So the whole idea is that we're trying to um, that we're trying to have fun. Command blocks are a lot of fun to play with. A lot of uh, you know, there's lots of things you can do. So many cool things. As long as we're having fun, that's the main thing. Uh, the next one is command blocks should should enhance the vanilla experience. Um, that is, so we don't necessarily want to. Um, uh, so anything that's in the vanilla uh, experience, we, we, we want that. We want to have that as part of the game. But we're trying to add additional things on or modify them just so that they um, are different, fun, um, and uh, more powerful um, and more cool. Uh, I also have some other more specific rules that I came up with. And I think as we go on, we'll probably... Know, come up with all sorts of rules that as we do things we might say no we should make a rule to never do that again um, so these are some things that I thought uh, would be helpful so you can't summon in an item without a fair payment so no putting in a give um, Dr. Henchman you know 64 diamonds um, I can get a diamond from a command blocks in, in a way but I would have to give a fair payment and Fair is very subjective. Um, we're just going to be our own judge of that, making sure that whatever kind of item swap we do, you know, if we pay an item to get some special item back, then um, that it's fair. Um, another thing that I thought would be helpful is if we give ourselves some sort of special ability, maybe we have some special items that um, give us, uh, you know, additional powers or um, they their more powerful version of the weapon. They should use some sort of fuel. So, uh, what might be a quick example of that? So, you might, um, oh, uh, I don't know, you could, uh, uh raw, you, I don't, I can't think of anything. Uh, I don't know, maybe you use, uh, your experience point, experience levels, you know, you might decide to consume a few of those, um, as you're holding an item and using it, um, uh, something like that. You know, there's lots of different options for that. You could take ad you know, items out of your inventory um, as the fuel. It's very open-ended. Um, data packs should only be used for things not possible with command blocks. So, we're getting dark. It is getting a little bit dark. Um, I'll have to go hide uh, in a hole in a second. So. Um, we don't really want to just create a function file with a whole lot of commands in it. Like we, you know, as I say, command blocks are expensive. Um, it takes a while to, it, 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 you know, we have to craft them. So we don't really want to cheat and use data packs to, to get away with not having to use uh, command blocks. And have to, you know, play, you know, you know, it should be a fair payment for things. Um, so for things that's not possible. Um, and where possible, make, oh, that's wrong, that says this generic, I, I meant to say things generic, instead of bespoke. So I'm going to go hide in a hole over here. It is, it, this place is just so dangerous. <laughs> I've come back and it's just been like creeper city everywhere. Um, the, um, so you could, um, you could, you know, you could make a command block thing that, um, I don't know, maybe it's, uh, maybe if I'm holding an item, I, I'm holding a wand and it, it makes an item, le it makes a, a, a torch levitate in front of me. Um, instead of doing that, you could do any item, you know, it could just be anything and uh, then you don't, uh, you know, then it's not, uh, you can use it for lots of things. And ideally, the more generic, the better. Um, if we can make a small command block contraption and then use the vanilla game to make use of that um ability you know, maybe we um maybe if a armor stand is holding a, a pickaxe it will uh, swing and break blocks and 
Um, and so any time then a, a, an arm stands holding a thing, it, it can it can do it. We can have lots of different workers or things like that. Is, is that a creeper? No, it's a bit of grass. So that's what I mean by make it generic instead of bespoke. So I watched that last clip back and oh my goodness, I like to ramble. <laughs> I don't know how anyone is still watching this. <laughs> um, well, I think that, uh, I think the problem is that I didn't really have a great example uh, in the lines. So I thought, why don't I just show you some ideas? I have two command block creations that I want to quickly put together in this episode to give you a sense of what this series is going to be about. All right, we have some progress. I am over here in the in the spawn chunks uh, because we're going to need to run some of these command blocks constantly while we're in the world. Uh, so I've started to dig out a little bit of area here. I've marked out. You can see just over there. There's some torches on a on some logs. I've marked out where the spawn chunks are. But this is going to be what I'm going to be calling the command processing unit or the CPU. The idea is that we'll have a nice safe place for all of our command blocks um, that need to run in the spawn chunks and they can all run in the same same place and we'll label them all and it can be a little bit of a complex. So what are these command blocks doing? So if you've ever played uh, a game called Stardew Valley, uh, one of the items in it is a is a magnet ring. Now, in Minecraft, when you drop items on the ground, you'll see that they kind of, they sit there and we, we can get closer and closer and closer and eventually we'll be able to pick them up. What the magnet ring does in Stardew Valley is that it allows you to pick them up from further away. And I figured this would be pretty useful in Minecraft. So I thought, well, we don't have rings in Minecraft, but we can... Uh, put it on a belt, so maybe we can have, or a, a rather leggings, uh, so maybe we could make it like a magnet belt on our leggings, um, and uh, when we're wearing a particular set of leggings, uh, we have this magnetic effect. So, uh, the first thing is we need to actually have a look at how we're going to be doing this, oh, I have to hop on top, um, how we're going to be doing this magnetic effect. So this is the command. It's just one command. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be executing as, and we're going to be trying to search for a player that has a particular item on them. Now we're searching in the inventory and in slot, a special slot, which is 101. Uh, this slot is the legging slot. Uh, it's a special number <laughs> slot, uh, but yeah, that's that's the slot for the leggings. And we're looking for um, a particular item that has the has this law tag in it, uh, which is magnetic. Uh, this law tag, I'll show you in a second when I create the the item um, for this. Um, uh, it, it just uh, it just will display on the item. Uh, but it's just what I'm going to use it as a convenience thing so that I can identify items uh, that have special abilities. I'll probably be using this um, mechanism, this trick, uh, for other uh, for other uh, you know special items or special effects that we're putting in the game. So anyway, it's finding a player that has this magnetic leggings. Uh, we're executing the command at at them. So this is at the the current user that it's looking at. And we're going to be finding, we're going to, be going to be then run and teleport all items which are, so all items which are in a five block radius of that player. And we're going to be teleporting them to, uh, these tildes mean the current location. So because we're executing it at the player's location, it's going to teleport all the items within a five block radius to the player. Oof. So all of that in one command, you can see the output there, what it looks like. I'll be putting the actual commands into, um, into the description so you have access to them. 
so this isn't on at the moment, but the that's not that's just one part of it. We actually need to get an item uh, that we can use to to get this magnetic effect. So this is um, this is the way that we're going to be doing it. Uh, how we're going to be getting the item. So here, the idea is that. We don't want to just get the magnetic effect for free. You should have to pay something as per our rules. Um, and the way that I figured we'd do it is with a compass. I thought that maybe you could use the compass. Let me hop off there. You could use the comp compass to get a magnetic effect because obviously compasses are you know, magnetic uh, to get a magnetic effect on your leggings. So we'll have a look at here. So uh, this is going to, so this needs redstone power uh, and it's using a pressure plate here. So the idea would be that you throw an item onto this pressure plate, uh, which would trigger the command box. And this is just going to look at that position, uh, you know, the one, uh, the position that's on top of the, um, the pressure plate, which is to the south. So one block to the south. Um, if there is an entity of the item type within that block then we're going to also try and run clear on the closest player compass one which means try and remove a compass from the closest players inventory and only remove one of them so if this all succeeds it means there's an item on this pressure plate and the player had a compass in their inventory and we removed it. Now, once we've done that, um, this command block will run and it's a conditional command block. Uh, so it will only run if the previous command block didn't run. So what does this one do? Well, it does kind of similar thing. It executes at the position. Um, so two blocks to the, uh, to the south and it's going to run data merge on the entity, the item that we've got there. So it's going to modify that item's data. And what's it going to do? It's going to add the magnetic, uh, the magnetic law to it. So this is just a, you know, this is just an existing thing in the game. I haven't added this in, this law. It's just something you can only get with command blocks. And then finally, this is just a, a little bit of extra effect. It's just going to find the closest player and going to play a chime. Uh, so it's going to have a note block sound when it was successful. Whew, that was a lot of explaining. So let's actually see this in action. Now let's hope that this works. So uh, we're going to, we've got the compass there. We're going to get our leggings. Um, well, let's just, for the time being, let's throw the compass over there. Let's just check that it doesn't trigger. Whoop. Okay, that didn't trigger. That's good. Now, if I pick up the compass, let's just put that on our inventory so that we can see it. Oh, there you go. So it modified that, and let's pick that up. Yes, there you go. You can see that it says magnetic now. So let's just, let's just see what this, oh, okay. Yeah, actually I can put this on uh, and let's see. So we've got lots of items on the ground. They're all just behaving normally. Now, if we come over here and we turn on this, if we get close enough, oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Okay, so you can see a little bit of command output. Um, let's, uh, let me go sleep first, and then we're going to just create another command block just to turn off that display. Um, I'm, I really don't want, I really want to avoid running commands myself um, in the console, uh, because obviously we've got command blocks to run commands, um, and that feels a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, more to the spirit of the game that we run things using these command blocks. 
All right. So the final thing we'll do over here is just turn off the command block output. Oop. All right. So yeah, let's put it here. All right. Game mode. Command block output. False. Oop, there we go. You can see that if I get through them now, yep, there we go, and we're not getting the command block output. Perfect. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move this part of the structure over over to my main, main base area because uh, I feel like this is probably better to be like a little structure of its own. Um, we'll put those ones in there. We'll leave the other ones in the CPU uh, and then we'll move on to the next uh, to the next command block structure I want to show you. All right, so we built it up just over here, the, uh, the magnet machine, the thing that magnetizes things. Um, it's the same command blocks, it's just vertical instead of horizontal. Uh, so, of course, I decided to build it with iron, uh, and now I've got no iron left. Um, but I just did a check on time, and I actually think that we may have run out, run out of time. I looked at the other command block contraption that I came up with, and it might take a little while to explain. So I think that uh, that's going to be it for this episode. I have so many ideas. I have at least uh, two uh, command block creations already ready to go. Um, we may get to both of them next episode. Let's We'll just wait and see. Um, and I also have uh, so many more ideas. I've got a, a big sheet full of ideas uh, for different contraptions and different uh, things we can use command blocks in a survival world. So thank you so much for watching. Um, please let me know what you think, what you want um, me to see, what kinds of things you're excited about. Uh, let me know. And uh, until next time, see ya.